everybody. It's time for another story. Today, I want to talk to you about seeds. I'm going to read you a couple of books today. This one is called Anno's Magic Seeds, and this is kind of a math riddle book. And so when you read this, you have to put on your math thinking skills and think about solving the riddles. So if you're really good at math, or if you're just learning math, this would be a fun one to read. So we're going to read this book, and then we're going to read a book about a bean. Did you know a bean is actually a seed? I'm going to show you how that works. But this book is called The Cool Bean. And then if we have time, I'm going to read one of my favorite books called Miss Rumpfield. She's one of my favorite authors, Barbara Cooney, with beautiful pictures. So let's get started. Annals Magic Seeds. This book is written by Mitsumatsu Anna. The wizard handed Jack the two golden seeds. These are magic, he said. Bake one seed in the oven until it is red and then eat it. You will not be hungry again for a whole year. Bury the other seed in the ground now and care for it well. Do you put seeds in, your, in the ground? Jack did. He did exactly as the farmer said, and in the spring, a tiny sprout came up. In the summer, two beautiful flowers bloomed on the plant. A little later, two fruits appeared. Where the flowers had been. Did you know that's what happens with seeds? Is where the flowers are, that's where the fruit will come, or the vegetables. And in the fall, the two marvelous fruit produced two seeds, just like those the wizard had given him. In the winter, Jack baked one seed and ate it. And then he buried the other seed in the ground. So the first year it made two, two seeds. He ate one and he saved one to, build, to make another plant. So the next year he planted the seed. And the same thing happened again. The flowers bloomed, and then he got two fruits, and then he took the seeds, and he ate one, and then he saved one to put into the ground. Now you think, was Jack very smart? What would you do? Once again, in the year after this, one plant came up, and two flowers bloomed, and two marvelous fruits grew, and two seeds were made. And again, Jack ate one, and then he buried the other one. The next year, he did the same exact thing. It was a pretty good life for Jack. The next year, while Jack rested and watched, a plant came up. Flowers bloomed on it, then two fruits appeared, and two seeds were made. And as before, Jack ate one seed and buried the other in the ground. And in the next year after that, the flowers bloomed again, and the marvelous fruits grew, and Jack ate one seed, and he put the other, buried the other in the ground. But finally, Jack began to think. This can just go on and on and on in the same way forever. He said to himself, if I just go on doing the same thing every year, well, maybe I'll do something different this year. I'll bury both seeds in the ground. What do you think is going to happen, you mathematicians? I will get through the winter somehow by eating something else. So that winter, he buried two seeds in the ground. 
and that next year, those two seeds produce two fruits each. So he had four seeds. Then in the spring of the second year, after his discovery, three sprouts came up. And in the fall, six seeds were made. That winter, Jack ate one seed and buried the other five. He made a noisemaker to scare away the crows and sparrows so they wouldn't come and eat the seeds. When the wind blew on it, the noise it made startled the birds. How many fruits will grow in Jack's garden next fall? So he's planting five seeds. And if each seed produces two fruits, how many fruits will he get the next year? Do you have the answer? Hey, I'm not going to show you because I want you to try and figure it out. Well, the next year, that is, the third year after he got the idea, all the sprouts came up in the spring. And in the fall, how many seeds? You're right. Ten seeds were made from the ten marvelous fruits. In the winter, so then Jack ate one seed, and then he buried how many seeds? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He buried nine seeds. The next year, the fourth year, in the spring, there came the sprouts. And in the fall, how many, how many fruits did he get? If he buried nine seeds. Do you, any of you know how to do multiplication? That's right. He got 18 seeds. He kept one seed to eat, and he put 17 in the ground. See how fast? Every year, he is doubling all of his seeds. The next year is the fifth year. In the spring, all the sprouts came up, and in the fall, the new seeds were made. That winter, Jack ate one seed, and he buried the rest of them in the ground. The next year, the sixth year, he did the same thing. All the sprouts came up just as before, and that fall, many seeds grew. So many that Jack didn't bother to count them anymore. While he was busy gathering in the harvest of his seeds, a nice young woman came along. Her name was Alice. Alice stopped to help him. How many seeds grew that year? Jack ate one baked seed and so did Alice. And that winter, they buried the rest of the seeds in the ground. How many seeds did they bury? So there's cute Alice. How many seeds did they get that year? In the spring of the next year, the seventh year, all the sprouts came up again. And in the fall, there were many seeds from all the fruits. That winter, Jack and Alice got married and they had a wedding party. They gave two delicious magic seeds to each of their five guests. Each guest served one seed for a souvenir of this happy day. Jack and Alice ate one seed each. That year, they also built a little storehouse to put 16 seeds in it to keep for a while. The rest of the seeds they buried in the ground. How many seeds did they bury? Okay, so they, they, they decided to save 16 seeds and put them in a storehouse to save for later. And then they served one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven seeds at the party. And the people got to take home one, two, three, four, five as gifts. So how many seeds did they plant in the ground that year? Well, let's count them. Maybe you already know the answer if you've been keeping track. So how many seeds are in this bag? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 seeds in each bag. Those of you who know how to count by tens, let's count by tens. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So he is going to plant 100 seeds this year. And how many fruits does each seed make? 
two, right? So how many fruits or how many seeds will he have the next year? The next spring, the eighth year, a lot of sprouts came up and in the fall, many seeds appeared. And then because they had quite enough seeds, they decided to sell some at the town market. They took 60 seeds to sell, including all those that they had put in the storehouse the year before. Then they put 34 new seeds in the storehouse to set aside, one seed each to eat, and buried all the rest of the seeds in the ground. How many seeds did they bury in the ground? Boy, they have a lot of seeds now, don't they? And they're getting very smart. By saving some seeds and putting some in the ground, and selling some seeds to other people. The next year was the ninth year since Jack had his good idea. In the spring, a lot of sprouts came up and in the fall, a lot of seeds were made. And that year, their baby was born. So in the winter, they had to save three seeds to eat since each of them wanted one seed. Now, because they had so many seeds, they went to market to sell 100 of them including all those they had been keeping in their storehouse. They put 51 of the new crop of seeds into the storehouse and buried all the rest of their seeds in the field. How many seeds do they have now to bury? Do you know the answer already? Let's count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. The next year was the 10th year. The baby was growing, so Jack and Alice built a new, bigger house. In the fall, their field was filled with plants bearing the magic seeds. Soon it would be time for gathering in all the harvest. But suddenly, oh, said Jack, the wind is blowing awfully hard. You gotta see their cute little baby. So the wind is blowing. How many seeds do they have in their storehouse right now? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 seeds they saved in their storehouse. It was a hurricane. We don't have hurricanes around here, but hurricanes have lots of wind and lots of rain, and they can cause lots of problems. They had never expected such a terrible storm. The river overran its banks and soon there was a flood. Jack tied the house firmly to a tree so it would not be carried away. Then he pulled the cow up onto their cart. Which was now floating like a ship. Alice was holding their little baby boy in her, in her arms, ran up to the attic of the house and Jack managed to scoop up just a small bag of seeds. He tied the bag to the tree. What a dreadful storm it was. The wind shook, the trees blew, and the rain came against them. Soon the field looked just like a wild sea. The wind roared and the dark, muddy water rumbled and rolled over the plain. The crop and the storehouse were completely washed away. Let's just look carefully at this picture and see what does Jack have with him right now. He has his wife and she has the baby and they have a bag of seeds the cow and they have their cat and dog back here. All the things that are most important he was able to save but he lost all of his seeds and his house. Finally the storm was over. The sky cleared and the sun came out but the fields were empty and bare. Still, our baby is safe. I'm glad for that, said Alice. Oh, I am very glad indeed, said Jack. And our cow has survived, and I was able to save ten seeds. 
So cheer up, dear wife. We will start over and make a new life together. This part really makes me cry. And sometimes it's hard to make a new life. But Jack had faith. And so did Alice. Jack baked three seeds. He gave one seed to Alice and one to their child. And he ate one seed himself. He buried the rest of the seeds in the ground. And Jack and his wife then bowed their heads and prayed together for a good cry. How many seeds did they get to plant? They had 10 seeds in their bag and they each just had one seed to eat. And then they planted the rest. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the end of that story. And we sometimes the author doesn't end the story for us. We just get to remember and think about what would the ending be. And in this story, if he planted seven seeds and if he had a good crop, he would get two seeds from each plant. And then he would just keep working hard to make more plants. I love that book. So I wanted to show you a little bit about what I picked in my garden today. So I planted some seeds in the spring, probably like you guys did. And if you can see these, these were the seeds that I planted. These are pea seeds. And they look just like peas, all shriveled up. But a seed has special nutrients in it that when you put it in the ground, and you give it some water and some sunlight, it can grow into something beautiful. And it can give you more plants. So I planted those seeds. And I also planted some lettuce seeds. Now these seeds are so tiny that I can't even get one out so you can see it. These are lettuce seeds. And if you look really carefully, you can see one. Can you see that? Those are just tiny little seeds, but I'm going to save these for next year so I can plant more lettuce, just like Jack did. But then now it's time for me to harvest what I planted. So today I went out and I picked some of the stuff that I planted. So I have some lettuce and I have some peas. And I have lots of peas growing with just a couple of seeds. But I wanted to show you inside the pea pod. Inside the pea pod are the peas. And these also become the seeds. So if I was like Jack, I could eat one. Mmm, that's a good little fox. You want to try one? <laughs> and maybe I could give one to our cute friends, one to little chickadee. Oh, Ruby's not here, Ruby! And then I could save this one and I could plant it next year in the spring. And then I could have more peas from this seed. Isn't that amazing? That is such a wonderful gift that Heavenly Father gives us, that we can grow things in the ground. These are some of my lettuce seeds, and they're kind of wilted because they've been in here for a minute, but they're so yummy to eat. And those came from just that little tiny lettuce seed. Isn't that amazing? Okay, I think we have time for one more, and I'll have to save Miss Rumpheus for next time. Is that okay? She's such a special book that I want to give her her own day. This book, sorry, this book is called The Cool Bean. I should have my sunglasses. 
But if you have some sunglasses at home, you could pause this and go put them on. Or something that makes you feel cool. This is a funny story about beans. This is a made up story. This is like a fiction story. That means that someone just made this up and they put, made these cute little pictures about these beans. Watch out! Here come the cool beans. The cool beans. Do they look cool? Oh yeah, check out how they move. Look at the way they swagger. Notice their sunglasses. Wow. The cool beans are known all over the school. From house to house, across town, and beyond county lines. Do you remember school, the place we used to go? In the olden days, last year, we were all one big pot of beans. We were a mixed bag, but somehow it worked. Yep, those were the good old days. See how they're all friends? All those cool beans. And then we stop seeing each other as much. That's just how it goes sometimes. You spend less time together, even though you're not totally sure why. If you notice right here, this cool bean's not part of the group. He's sitting here over by himself. Has that ever happened to you? Or do you ever see your friends not joining in? and playing with you. I watched as the beans I knew so well, the beans from my own pod became the cool beans. Oh, they were so cool. One of them could play the guitar. One of them could draw the best superheroes and one of them could jump higher than any bean I've ever known. They were so cool. Me? Well, I mostly stayed home. And I mostly stayed the same. Surely I made some small changes. I wore sunglasses that were too big. I slicked my hair back. I strutted around. I swaggered. Do you ever do stuff to try and be cool? To try and be like everybody else? I was still picked last for everything. My clothes never seemed right. I snorted when I laughed. I walked into stuff. I was an uncool bean for sure. I started thinking of myself as just a common being with no special skills. I couldn't compete, so I didn't even try. I'd never be a cool bean. It seemed like there were two types of beans in the world. These were the cool beans, and there were beans like me, who weren't so cool. The days all blended together. I lived my life, and things were just okay. I took tests, and I ate lunches, and I mostly kept to myself. The cool beans continued to be cool. I mean, sure, I miss them a bit, but it's not like I was going to say anything. I felt like all that coolness had gotten in the way of our friendship. And that's how it went until one day, I was in the cafeteria and if you don't know what a cafeteria is, if you haven't gone to school yet, it's where they eat lunch. I dropped my lunch on my loafers. 
that then something sort of miraculous happened. Out of nowhere, one of the cool beans helped me clean it up. He didn't even say anything. He just gave me a nod. That was it. Later, I was out on the playground and I tripped and scraped my knee. And maybe I cried a little bit and everybody saw it. Another one of the cool beans came to my side. And without a word, he dusted me off and helped me. That afternoon, I was sitting in class. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't notice, but our teacher had called on me. Everybody stared. I sat there in silence. Nobody said anything. And then, then everybody just laughed at me. That was it. After today, I was officially a has-been. He didn't feel like he would ever be cool again. Do we sometimes laugh at people when they do things? And does that make people feel good? Sometimes that hurts, huh? Laughter hurts. It makes us sad. But then one of the cool beans stood up and came over to me. Everybody watched. She leaned in close and whispered, Hey, the teacher asked you to read from page 32. Then she gave me a quick wink and went back to her seat. It was a small gesture, but it was also everything. Was this cool being being nice? Was she being kind and looking out for others? I walked home with a goofy smile on my face. I smiled all the way through dinner. That day made all the difference. It was a day that could have been really, really bad. It was if it was not for the kindness of a few cool beans. It gave me a shred of confidence. That shred of confidence has continued to grow. I like these pictures. Is this how your family would look if they were all beans? Somebody had my back. Or a few somebodies. Having, your, having someone's back means you're watching out for somebody, making sure that they're okay. After that, I started hanging out with the cool beans again. How have you been? Get it? How have you been? Not all the time, but sometimes I hung out with the cool beans. At lunch, after school, and even on the weekends. Throughout all of this, I realized that it's not about how you look or any of that silly stuff. See how he's throwing away all those things? It's not his sunglasses or his hair or his clothes that makes him cool. It's about a wink or a nod or a smile at just the right moment. It's about dusting somebody off, helping them up again, and putting, pointing them in the right direction. You need a hand? Yes, please. Now that's cool. I like that book. I think that's a very good book. And mostly I like it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you who wrote this. Jory John and Pete Oswald. But the one thing that I really like about that book is the cool beans were also kind. So if you're one of the cool kids on your block or your school, make sure you always look out for the other kids. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be cool beans.
we have to do that. Look out for the other two. Okay, I do want to show you one little thing that you can do at your house that's really easy. You can grow your own seed in a bag. And all you need is some water. Can you hold that? It's a little cheeky. Some beans. These are bean seeds, and your mom probably has some of these in her pantry. You just need one. So seeds, bean seeds, or any kind of seed would work. A paper towel, or even a napkin would work. And a baggie. Okay, so what you are going to do, I'm going to show you really quickly, is you're going to take the paper towel and you're going to wet it. Okay, just get it really wet. You can either put it underneath the faucet and squeeze it out, or you can spray it with a spray bottle. This would be kind of fun to do outside since it's hot. Okay, you want to squirt it really good. Okay, and then open up your paper towel. So open it back up, and then take your seed, your one seed, and put it right inside your paper towel. And then you're gonna fold it up like you're tucking your little bean into bed. You're gonna fold it and just make it a cute little bed. Make sure it has, you can kind of see that up close, but make sure it has enough room to grow when it starts growing. Okay, so then all you do is take your little bed with your seed in it, put it in a plastic bag, just like that, and then zip it up, and then you can hang it in a window, somewhere where it's going to get light. Because what do seeds need to grow? This one's even going to grow without dirt, but then you're going to have to plant it in dirt when it starts to sprout. You'll be able to see it sprout and break through the seed. The little sprout will come up. But there's one thing you must do. You can't forget about your seed. You have to take care of it, just like Jack took care of his seeds. You have to take care of your seed, and you have to put it in the sun. And what else do you think you need to do? That's right, Chicky. You need to keep watering it. So every couple of days, just open up your bag and give it a couple squirts. Don't forget to close up your bag. And then put it back in the sun. And then probably after five or six days, it will start to grow. I'm going to put my seed in the window too and see what happens. Okay, well that was lots of fun today. I love you and I hope you look in your yard, in your garden, and see what you can plant and see what can grow. Have a good night.